So we try this again. It's the Cares None Be Dope podcast. I am your host, Chris Cares None, and I have a very special guest in the house, Harry Terjanian. Terjanian. That's right. <laughs> okay, That's cool. right. I'm That's how special it. it is. So I don't know my name. That's how special I am. Before we get into the craziness of this podcast, podcast is going to be awesome. I want to say that we just had a start that didn't go so uh, smooth. No, the tech, you had some technical difficulties. That's okay, though. I'm, uh, I've, I've had like a thousand of those <laughs> in every job I've ever done. There's been one or two times that just something isn't working, man. It's all good, though. It's all good. I'm happy to do it. Well, today, Harry is a writer, a st funny stand-up comic. He's the voice of Capital Wrestling. Do you own Capital Wrestling? Well, it's Catalyst Wrestling now, but I'm, I'm a partial it owner changed? in the company. Yeah, we changed the name of it uh, for some legal reasons. Oh, um, <laughs> nothing bad, nothing bad, but just oh, okay. like uh, just copyright things. But um, uh, yeah, I'm partial owner of Catalyst Wrestling and uh, the full time announcer and on screen character and the whole thing. It's a lot of fun, man. It's a lot. That's a lot of fun. I have fun doing the podcast Man School 202 which I think is where you know me from most. Yes, that's where that. I originally. So yeah. let me tell this, tell you the quick story how it sure, started. Please. Girl please. broke my heart. Uh, mm -hmm. I put all my value in her. Uh, okay. It's a bad idea. It, ter the worst idea of all time yeah. now yeah. listening yeah. Never, to you guys. Yeah, never put your value into somebody else completely. Uh, to me, it's like at all. How old were you when this happened? Probably 29. Yeah, boy, yeah. You know? You're still, yeah, yeah, that'll oh, yeah. happen. Right, right. So That's around the time I messed up my head. Sure. Man. And and, it, and it's deadly. And anyway, she broke up with me on Thanksgiving Day over text. Oof. OK, wait, was this before or after Thanksgiving uh, uh, dinner or whatever? So I don't have a huge family and I normally go eat at. I was eating at her family's house for like the last four years. OK. And so I'm at my buddy's house waiting to go over there. Like when I'm getting the call to go over there and all of a sudden I get the text. You know what? Maybe you're right. I've been thinking about it, talking to my mom. Maybe we are better off as friends. I'm like, okay. Oh boy. <laughs> oh no. Thanksgiving yeah. Day. Thanksgiving. Th you can't <sighs> wait till tomorrow, motherfucker. <laughs> Listen, I've gone through the whole holiday season. Uh, I've I've had I've had girls that I was not interested in in uh, like October, and I'm like, oof. Uh, I look at the calendar. It's October 30th. I'm like, ah, uh, I think I'm stuck with this until like January 6th. <laughs> You can't. I mean, it's rough, man. But if you toughed it out, if you care about that person at all, you got to ride it through. You got to put on a smile on your face and ride yeah. it through unless they're like horrifically abusive and they're just itching for it. But the uh, yeah, that's rough. Mike, what happened that what happened that you. So that so here's so here's said, the thing you said you should be better off as friends. OK, so. so I didn't have and that now and it all makes sense after listening to your podcast, everything right. that happened, I can see it all play out. OK, there were things that her and I had issues with sexually that okay. I wanted to end it multiple times. She mm. started crying, saying, you know, what da, 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 and she she emotionally got me back in. I, I and I didn't have the man. I wasn't man enough to end it when I really kind of wanted to. Ah. I wanted to, but I didn't. And so what she did was she waited until it was her opportunity to end it with you. So it was the old you can't fire me. I quit yep. type of situation. Ah, oh, boy. Yeah, I've had that. I mean, I've had that happen. And then the way I times, responded yeah. was awful. Oh, no. What did you do? Yeah, oh, what did you do? I'm like, baby, what are you talking about? It's me. It's me. It's me. What? Are you, what, what? And oh, I would just. No. And what I learned from your podcast, you and Dante and them. Yeah. If somebody asks you for time and you give them the whole fucking calendar, that's it. You throw a I calendar should, in face and you go, you got all the time you need. And then you're out. I should have been like, all right. You know, yeah, because yeah, that's all right, but, man. You don't you don't know. You don't know until you know. And it's OK. Like nobody knows because nobody tells you. That's what the whole point of the podcast is to to let people know about it, like to know your value, to know your what your negotiate, your non negotiables are and things like that, you know, and. So most people don't know. And the way guys approach relationships is completely is completely wrong because it's also it's on women's terms, which we just kind of allow it to be on right. women's terms. We just play by whatever rules there, which is why sometimes you can't win an argument because you're playing like you're playing on foreign turf. <laughs> right, you know? right, right. Like, 
like, hey, wait, you said that was cool. Yeah, well, that was yesterday. Now it's not cool. You know, it's you're like, what? (laughs) What? So here's what happened. Yeah. So I. um, I, So how did we change your life? Because you said we changed your life. This is I'm fascinated by it was I was blindsided. Okay. I'm the kind of person that's like, I'm not going to allow bad shit to just keep happening to me. Right. Okay. So I, I read at least four different books on like women psychology. Um, I read uh, body language for dummies one-on-one. Okay. Uh, I put a lot of emphasis and then, a bu- so then I started getting into the, uh, what do you call it? The pickup artist the world. Pickup art, pickup artist world. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a couple of little things. And at the time I was like, okay, some of this shit works. Right. And, and, and I, I know you guys would agree that some of it works too. Yeah. A- some of it does work. Yeah. So, I, I was posting these things that I've been learning, da, da da da, and then a buddy of mine goes, "Dude, you ever heard of Patrice O'Neal?" Oh and yeah. I'm like, "You mean the the stand up comedy?" He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "But dude, he has a whole thing about like women and relationships and shit." I'm like, "Okay." So checked out the Beige Phillips show, right? I'm sure you've oh, heard yeah. this story many times with people. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it started out Dante and Patrice used to do a show called the Black Phillips Show. That Excuse was because Black Phillips. Yeah, show. yeah, he did the Black Phillips Show on Sirius XM. And then uh, after Patrice passed, after Dante wanted to do keep the show kind of going. So we did the beige Philip show at the time. Yeah, because he's light skin because he's light skin. Yeah, he's he's light skin. Yeah. So yeah. I so he's like, dude, you got to check my buddy's like, you got to check out. I'm telling you, man, you got to check out. Like, I think it's 10 episodes. How many episodes was it? It's only about 10. Yeah, maybe 10. I maybe 13, them. 10 or 13, something like that. I binged them and I was like, "Ooh, this is good. Uh, really good. He, he seemed, and in, in hindsight, kind of upset. And I feel like that's where Dante came along and kind of yeah, like. Yeah, well, Patrice was a little bit. Um, it's like different versions of the same realization. So because what Patrice brought to the table was like dismay and anger, which is valid. But to a certain point, I think after a while. So he had the anger part of it, like how crazy relationships are and how crazy the thing is the way we guide relationships and the crazy things we do let women do and talk us into as far as relationships, just relationships and marriage in general. It's a funny thing. Like you hear this all the time. Like why, why don't men want to get married? Why don't they want to get married? And like, Oh, because there's nothing in it for, what do you mean? Why <laughs> right. don't well, we want to get married? There's nothing in it except the financial obli- and legal obligation. Right. Should something happen? Like, and then just, but women, kind of ignore that you know and just go i just i just don't understand why men i can't imagine i mean if anyone could give me an answer and that's like why i don't know yeah like why pay for the cow and you can get the milk for free that's fine we could it's not even an issue of that now you want to charge me for you want me to pay for that cow forever for the rest of my life (laughs) once i can't have any more of the cow right that's the whole part i don't know there's a lot of craziness that happens with the so relationship so yeah i went over so i'm like oh shit well that's it there's only 10 episodes like i'm like i, I don't need more and mm. somehow i don't even know how i how i found you guys but i did and i was probably you probably maybe two three hundred episodes in when i found you oh really okay so then i'm like oh okay so then i'm like oh then i started learning who you were and everything and then that's when o- the old girl was on yeah. the pod andre yeah. wasn't on yet he was oh, okay so you're early on so then Before I went, Andre was there, yeah. Yes. So then I went and bought the the website or the app. And okay. To get you past got the, the app. Fire. Yeah, because I'm like, this is like three bucks a month is whatever it was. I'm like, this is like the the most dumb, idiotic thing to not get. Right. All that knowledge and information is super valuable, like crazy. So the show is now Man School 202, so that people know what it is. But yeah, we started out. Um, and all I think not all the episodes are up on YouTube, but a lot of the episodes are up on YouTube as well. If anybody wants to check that out. But yeah, it started out because Dante wanted to help me out because I was going through a terrible relationship breakup at the time. And I was very lost and depressed. And we just happened to be doing a stand up gig together because we're both stand up comedians. And Dante is the relationship guru. I mean, he is just uh, he knows, man. He's been with over 3000 women and all this other stuff. And like he knows <laughs> all these techniques and stuff. And but it really it's not that much technique. What it comes down to is just uh, believing in what you do and setting boundaries and realizing what your non-negotiables are. 
and, and not negotiating. never yep. negotiating with it and being willing. A lot of it is being willing to take the loss because I think a lot of guys uh, are afraid of losing their girl because in their head is like, man. And I was there like, it took me a lot of effort to get this one. I was lucky to find this one. What if I never find another one again? I could go another five years or something. And it's the wrong mentality to have with it because it's just better to be alone than it is to be with somebody who is wrong for you, who is just not the right fit. And just, and that's why also we don't, you know, we're scared to lose. So you, you can't do anything like that. If you're scared to, you can't buy a used car. If you're scared mm -hmm. to getting ripped off, if you're scared right. and you know, women, it's not their intention to take advantage. I don't think women are malicious in what no. they do. More not often most. than not, not right, most. <laughs> I mean, not most. Shout, shout out to my mom, who is pretty malicious. <laughs> uh, my mom is, it was pretty she wild malicious. for the night. She wild my for the mom, night. My mom is uh, legendarily <laughs> wild for the night, as we say on this show. <laughs> um, yeah, she gets she gets out at night. She slowed down. The COVID slowed her down a little bit. She stays okay. in during the day now. Okay, she stays okay. in uh, <laughs> most of the time now. But you know, that's the whole thing about the show. So, I mean, what what aspect of it did you find the most like appealing? So, you know, what hits you the hardest? Man, like, I oh, mean, literally like all like I sucked it all, you know, pause. But I took all the information in like a sponge and I literally went back from episode one and started from scratch. huh? Yeah. Wow. Literally. And then caught up. And, I, and then maybe within the last and I'm gonna be honest, maybe within the last year it's been sporadic because i feel like I've, I've gained a lot from it and i've been trying to get sure my yeah but here's the best thing about it yeah screw the women y your podcast helped me understand the value of myself so there you it, go it, that's it, the it most important part to not even worry about the women it's like to to, to get my shit dope yeah, you can't you can't. And I this isn't just for men, but just women in general. If you can't have your thing together, you can't expect somebody else to also uh, want to be with you if you're still if you're a mess. Right. You know, and I think that's the biggest problem is that we think that we look at relationships as something to fix us to some degree or, or complete us when that's really the wrong way to approach it. Because if you're not working on yourself kind of if you're not the best you why would somebody else want to be you you're trying to trick somebody and that's what i think a lot of people do it's you're trying to trick somebody into like into staying with you forever and like looking past your flaws what 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 were the things that you fixed by the way chris uh man so like a lot of stuff but probably the main thing was so just the first thing that comes off the head was the best game is no game right yeah. Right. You don't want so yeah. I stopped trying to game women and I started being brutally honest. Oh, that's fun, isn't it? Uh, it's scary at it first, was, but it's, it's fun. It, right. Right. I'm but say, it's but hard after a at while, first. it's yeah, you get addicted to it a little bit. You're itching for somebody. You're it's almost weird because uh, when you first start out, you're a little tentative. But the second you get a chance, like you you're itching for a woman to do something semi rude or semi awful. Yeah, like, like, what, were, what, were, what was your experience with that? I mean, even like, for instance, me and a good buddy of mine, we'd go to the bar and after learning these, this new mindset, I'm now going to say, as I, what I want to say, do what I want to do. And some women might claw back at that. Right. Yeah. And sometimes I'd be like, well then, you know, I wouldn't say it cause I'm not an asshole, but I, my mentality would be, well, fuck you. I, I don't need you. You know what I'm saying? That'd be my mindset. Yeah. And my buddy would be like, no, bro, you gotta, you gotta just calm that shit down. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, for what? He's like, well, you know, I can try to, I'm trying to fuck. Da, da. I'm like, so let me get this straight. And then me and him would have drunken talks overnight. You'd rather not be you and fuck this girl mm. than to be you and not fuck this girl. And personally, right. I can, I, I'm because of your podcast, can't I can't, anymore. I can't do that. I will never do that. Yeah. Yeah. I've I turned mean down more vagina because of that. You see what I'm saying? Smart, smart. Well, the, the other thing is this, though. It's uh, it's not like the intention. Make it make no mistake. It's not like uh, pickup art where I know the intention is to neg people, which is like to do a half compliment, half insult. To I, no, like, I go lie. I, I kind of do that a little bit. Yeah. Like, like, it, but to me, it's more of a friendly banter. Sure. Like yeah. But fun with it. But my my point is, I'm, I'm saying like the idea of the show is we never go in there like 
hey, find a woman and immediately take her down mm-hmm. a peg and insult her. It's no, about no. what it is. It's it's about when sometimes depending on what woman you're dealing with or how she looks or you know what her status is as, as a person. Sometimes women uh, who get a lot of offers from men, a lot of you know, a lot of phone numbers, a lot of they start to get very. Um, they could be very mean or aggressive or just rude. And they just live like that because they're just allowed to behave they're like that. To, right? Guys like your friend never bother to correct her and go, hey, what what did you say? You can't you can't do that. That's not what are you doing? That's you, that's impolite. Right. 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 Yeah. Who are you talking to? So the idea is just speaking your mind when something bothers you or when somebody does something that's inappropriate. Right. And just going, yeah, we don't have to do this. It's cool. Like, and you have to be the judge of that yourself. You have to be fair about it. You have to reasonable, firm and fair, reasonable, firm and fair. Exactly. That's another thing we talk about. I like listening to you because it reminds me of all the things I got to write down for a book <laughs> at some point. But reasonable, firm and fair is one of the things we talk about. Right. All right. So it's like, is the request reasonable? Uh, you know, you have to be firm with how you deal with something if you believe in it. And but you have to also be fair, even if something if, if, you know, if a request is something that's inconvenient for you, but it's important to her and it's not unreasonable, if it's a reasonable thing, sometimes you have to do that. So it's a balance, but it's about knowing how much you're willing to do, how much is fair and how much is right. You know, you have to balance those things out Absolutely. as a man. And sometimes it does involve the harshest thing that most men don't want to deal with, which is being able to walk away. And the thing actually, when women are hot, men will tolerate a lot. Right. But the irony is that if you're actually honest, more often than not, that is more attractive to a woman, Way especially more. someone who's used to being told yes all the time. And that kind of jars them. They get a little confused. Like, oh, who's this guy? Yeah, it's right. more valuable when you're able to speak honestly. And that's, you know, and that's the what most- the show was founded on. And. For sure. And then like just the brutal honesty thing. And then so again, outside of the women thing, it taught me to be honest with myself. Am I really working hard towards what I want to do? One thing you guys always talked about was where, where like confidence comes from. And, and this is at least what I've gathered from it is confidence for me comes from mm. the fact that I'm actively working on being the best me. That's where I get my confidence yeah. from. It's like, so whatever you can say to me don't matter about whatever your opinion is, because I know I'm actively working on so many parts of my life, you know, and I'm willing to. Exactly. Right. And I'm willing to personally do things that I know a lot of people would find hard, not that they can't, but that they probably wouldn't that they because they find it hard, you know, like I stopped masturbating. Yeah, I mean, that's what you have to do. You know, okay. I did that whole no. Right. How thing. much have you stopped? In, okay. in maybe three years, How I've long? Just... done it maybe 15 times in three years. Wow. Yeah, wow, I went incredible. I go, I, I go me, in, bro. I quite go, honest. I take cold showers every day okay. for three years. Like I'm I try I'm like really trying to work on this. Now the cold showers is, is to get your body going or just to stop masturbating? Because it's two different no, no, things. No, no, no. So those two different cold things. Cold shower like, is to rejuvenate. Right. Okay. So no, no, it's, it's to, it's me, it's to more rejuvenate than your body. Well, no, no. Well, it, it helps hmm. with that. You get the energy, it's good for your skin and your hair. But for me personally, it gives me balls. Because if I want to go talk to that girl at the bar and she rejects me, is that more uncomfortable than that cold shower? That's how I look ah, at it. Ah, okay. Because it is not All fun right. to take the cold shower. And I, I do it. I, I have money. I can afford to take a nice, hot, warm shower. I'm choosing. You have hot, to, hot water. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm choosing yeah. to take the cold how shower. How often do you do the cold shower every day? Every day, sometimes twice. Do you do it every day? Sometimes twice. Oh, wow. For, that's for three incredible. years. See, now that's making me rethink. <laughs> I'm serious. Three and years the whole, and the whole cold idea is, showers. Cold oh, shower. And the idea is I'm just wanting to control my mind. Actually, recently, I just read this about the cold showers. So what I would do is I would go in there and I'd be, you know, and I and it was cold as fuck. But the idea is to go in there and take a warm shower and, like, calm your mind as if it's warm. So that's like the idea now. Oh, wow. Okay. That takes a lot. That takes a lot of uh, time and training to do that. And I'm 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 getting there, bro. I I I told myself because of your pocket, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to be the best of me. Period. 
Okay. Where and did I'm you only, find out that the cold shower? Where did you hear about the cold shower? So I'm I'm very self developmental, self introspective. My YouTube, if you saw it, is like fifty percent how to improve as a person, you know. And it okay. was like it was like a TED talk. And my first thought when I saw it was like, who the fuck is taking cold showers on purpose? That's like, like that's my first thought. Like that's crazy. But I'm willing to like, let me see, you know. And the guy was like, I'm telling you, it's life changing. I'm like. All right, well, let me give it a shot. You know, somebody tells me it could change your life. I'm gonna give it a shot. You, yeah, you might as well try it. And that's, um, and I've, I've, I've seen it in different. Yeah, go. For, no, you go ahead. No, I, I was gonna say, and here's what I've learned. When I tell people this, I'm telling you, brother, it could change your life, right? I'm telling you firsthand, it could change your life. And they say, oh, I could never take a cold shower. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. And I'm like. That's where the disconnect is. You can, you won't even try. I'm telling you to even if you try it and you say it's not for me, that's one thing. But you're like, oh, I, I can't even do yeah. that because I I need my comfort. To me, I've yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go I've ahead. done it. I've done the cold showers. I don't do them as consistently as you do. But I do them every once in a while. But yeah, at least you got to give it a shot. I mean, every day is uh, all respect to you. That is. That is out there. But if I'm, it works for you, that's part of your process. There's a lot of different ways to do it. There's a lot of different books to read about it, uh, about improving your life. I like what Tim Ellis does a lot. Who's Tim I Ellis? I think he does. Tim Ellis does. Um, so I forget how he started, but he's basically become a New York Times bestselling author. And he's got a podcast now, but he liked figuring out how to do the most, how to get the most amount of of uh, end product out of the least amount of time of effort, like mathematically. So he did this thing called the four hour body, which he learned what is the best diet that I can do? And what is the best exercise that I can do in the least amount of time to get me the biggest results? And so in his book, talked four, about this on the podcast, we've talked about it a little bit. We don't talk like about it a ton, that. but okay. it's come up a little bit. But I, I was a big fan of what he does because I'm the same way because sometimes you're like, I feel like I'm busting my ass doing this and that. So he talks about cold showers in, in the as far as weight loss goes. He talks about ice baths and, and different things you can do. So what he figured out was Michael Phelps probably burned the most amount of calories, I think 10,000 calories a day or something like that. And he tried <laughs> to figure out why. And it, it's not just the swimming. It's the fact that he's, he's swimming because he's in a pool. And the pool temperature is, you know, your body temperature is 98 degrees, right? Right. Pool temperature is never 98 degrees, no matter what pool you swim in, right? I mean, right. The, the warmest pool is like 70 degrees. But the colder the pool is, the more your body has to, uh, in order to survive, has to heat you up, has to burn fat to and create like adrenaline to keep you warm through the right. cold water. So then he took that and figured out how to do it with ice baths. So ice baths gets your metabolism going because your body has to heat up to Makes keep sense. you from freezing to death, basically. And so that's one of those things like that. So there's a lot of reasons, but part of it is, yeah, it gets the blood flowing. It increases the adrenaline because your body has to increase adrenaline to keep you alive. You're shocking your body because your body's not supposed to be 50 degrees. Right. <laughs> it's you not know, supposed to be. <laughs> and that's the whole idea of it. So that's what there's a lot of different things like that. Yeah. But I'm a big fan of Tim Ellis doing that and all that. But is this is this the audience of your podcast? I'm curious, like motivational stuff, because I know you do the, oh, man, the so, social media stuff is more fun well, than it is motivational, but it's changing a little bit, I think. Right. Well, here's here's the thing. I, and I, so I've done a lot of research on you got to have a niche and stick to it, especially when it comes to this online thing. But I just can't do that. So if, I, if I'm going to stunt my growth in this because I want to do what I want to do, then so be it. But I like to I like to feel like I'm a I'm not a stand up comic like you, although I want to do that because it's, it's like the scariest thing ever. So I know I have to. do. Oh, it. wow. OK. You know, what I'm saying that because it's scary, I have to do it, you know. All right. And, and, and then I know all the stand up comics kind of Andre was, was talking to me about this earlier that they it's changing now, but they used to kind of look down on the, the social media guys. Because well, it is a, it's a different form. They and it's still tougher. look down on the social media people. However, they have no choice but to embrace it. So more, all my, my entire Instagram <laughs> feed, I can now tell are people doing TikTok videos. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> and uh, it's weird to see them all of a sudden switch from like photos and jokes. And then all of a sudden you're like, see them doing like lip singing. You're like, oh, they just discovered the TikTok. Yeah, they figured it out. On the bar. Huh? <laughs> I have to do it too, but I, I don't think I'm going to. 
I think I'm just going to put up clips on TikTok, but um, and it'll work. It'll work. Yeah. So that's the next step. But like, so for you, I mean, you can do both, though. You can be funny and inspirational and all that. So stuff. that's why. So just my don't original, be boring. That's it. Well, yeah. So my original name on the Instagram was Chris Make Laugh. Right. I, so like my first 50 videos or maybe 100 and something were all comedy based. And I realized, first of all, it cares none. It's like, I've been saying this for like 15 years, right? It's a thing I just made up one day. Don't really know exactly how. I just know that I made it up. <clears throat> and that kind of is like what my mindset is. Like, I'm going to do whatever I want, despite how hard it's going to be, what you say, what she thinks, cares none. I'm going to do it. And you can use that as an asshole way, like, oh, you're an asshole, cares none. Or you can say, you know what, man, I'm scared to get on this get on this open mic night but you know what cares now i'm gonna do it anyway it's almost like fuck it it's it's an easy way to say fuck it right yeah so as far as the niche as far as the niche i think that i'm naturally like if i'm in a room people just always kind of gravitate towards my energy i think i'm silly i'm willing to make a joke i'm willing to say whatever the fuck i want and people tend to find that silly and funny so my whole life i've been told dude you need to do stand-up comedy you need to da 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 but what i'm learning now is i'm I'm better with the funny by being just naturally me as opposed to writing a joke down and trying to figure it out. Although I want to learn how to do that, but naturally I think I'm just a funny guy. Now I know that does not equate to stand up comedy. I know that for a fact, there's a lot of guys that think they're funny, but you go and then you're going to bomb every time. You know, there's a ton of them. Oh boy. Right. They're not probably guys that work. (laughs) Some of them are. You'd be surprised how many aren't funny that are successful. Uh, I mean, that's that's the other thing. There's plenty of unfunny people who are making a living in stand up anyway, but it doesn't matter. It's just it's just how much you want to work it and how much you care about. It. You have to care about your own thing. So right. I know you always care about your stuff. You know, you you've always cared about making sure that you're and we've had, I think, one or two brief conversations about it. But so check day. this out. So yeah. I was uh, again, you guys are like huge to me, Like you know, this like. So I was going into New York, okay? And I don't know if I talked to you specifically first or Dante, but I'm like, I'm coming out. Where can I see Dante perform? That was what I said. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'll be playing at so-and-so here at this time. So I'm like, oh, bet, that's perfect. So we went out there and me and my buddy Mark, who loves you personally, he's like, oh, wow. He like, he says, I relate to Harry's way. And because he's not as like, I'm more on the Dante where I'm more like, ah, you know, I'm more like, what is it? What was it back in the day? Like, I, I club the bears. I'm like a bear. Oh, okay. You or like club I club bear. bears. Yeah, yeah you we know what talked I mean. about. Yeah, hunting uh, rabbits, deers, and bears. Yeah, I, I'll you, go for the bears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. is more of a rabbit, you know, kind I'm, of guy. I'm more of a, I like the deer. In I the like middle, in the okay. Middle. Yeah, yeah, I like them in the middle. He related to you. He was like, I, and he, he's going to love this podcast. <laughs> he's going to, he loves uh-huh. it. Well, I'm anyway. so glad, yeah. yeah well, Dante is, a lot of people can't relate to Dante because some of the way he carries himself in a very flashy way, even though Dante is very uh, the kindest and most down to earth person I know, but he does believe in himself and he does uh, carry himself in a flashy way and he dresses in a flashy way. And, you know, he's can be very outlandish. And some people are like, I can't ever be that. But the beauty of everything that Dante taught me is that I'm really nothing like that. I'm not an attention seeker. I'm not like over the top and the, uh, you know, that doesn't relate to me as much. So, but it still works like being confident. You can still be confident in your own lane, in your own way. Mm. Um, You can be confident, but silent or confident, but quiet, you know, you can do that. So it's not just for him. Anyway, sorry. You were telling me a story about you came up to New York, you and your buddy, Mark. Yeah. So we go there and I'm super excited and wasted out of my mind. And I'm, I'm ready to go see some stand up and see, hopefully see my, you know, see my guy Dante after the show. I go in there. I'm like, hey, I'm here for Dante. They're like, oh, he's not performing. And I'm like, what? Oh, which <laughs> like, club? oh no. Which club was this? Oh, I forgot exactly. I'll, I can probably figure it out. But um, so I'm, I'm devastated. <laughs> I'm like, I'm from Chicago. We came out here. I think I hit you. I'm like, oh, what's I hit you or Dante up? I'm like, man, I came all the way from Chicago. Da, 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 you know what happened? He goes, I guess they switched his end time. Yeah, they might have switched spots with somebody or yeah, yeah, yeah they might have switched. You was like, oh, my bad. I'm gonna go talk to him. Da, da, da. He goes, you were super cool about it. You know, and I, and I, yeah. I didn't think I didn't come at you all fucked up. I'm just like, man, I missed you when the next time. Anyways, I'm not sure how it happened. But then like Don, I got Dante's number. He gave me and then he called me. 
Oh, he like wow, called, yeah. called my phone. I'm walking into work about to be late. And then I'm like, oh, shit. He, I'm like, so I picked up the phone. And it was Dante. And I'm like, fuck work. I, I'm about to talk to him. So me and him chatted for like. <laughs> you were late for work. Yeah. I was like, fuck that you're job. talking to Dante. <laughs> yeah. I'm like 10, 15 minutes late in the back. And uh, see if you were what you should have done is clock in and then take the phone call. You got to think you're going to get in trouble either way. I should have did that, man. Yeah, but uh, he was super (laughs) dope about it. Yeah, this is when he had when his child, he hadn't really told nobody. He told me so I knew. Oh, wow. So this was not that long ago. Yeah, this wasn't that maybe a year and a half. I wish I'd known you were in town. No, you definitely didn't hit me up because I would have made sure I knew enough of you then. Uh, I think I did. did I I'm, think I I'm did. Terrible with Instagram. I'm terrible with Instagram. I'm gonna give you my <laughs> after this. I'm gonna give you my number and stuff. You let me know the next time you're when all this COVID stuff. I mean, it's possible. I'm I'm probably Wait, terrible. Are you in, you're in LA right now or uh, California? I'm in I'm in LA at the moment. Yeah, with my girl. But um, I'm Stay I mean I'm still no. I'm gonna be. York. I mean I'm I live in New York. I mean at this point uh, I'm here so often. I'm bi coastal, so I mean it doesn't matter. But I, I'm gonna definitely be back in New York. Let's see. I'm trying. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm going to give you yeah, my no. number after the thing anyway. I feel bad that like especially recently because I definitely knew I I, because I started following you on Instagram. So I definitely would be aware either I didn't see it in time or something. But we got to make we got to we want you to come and hang next time you're in New York or whatever. Well, then, you yeah. so Dante we, was like, dude, my bad. Da, 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 da. This is what happened. He's totally cool about it. Now, at the time, like, who the fuck am I? You know, I'm just some guy. But the fact that he did that to me was dope. Is you know, I was like, I really respect this guy. I already respected him. And then you, you were super like, oh no, you know, I'll talk to him. Da 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 da. And all you and Andre, uh, Andre too. All three of you guys were like, no, we'll figure it out. So yeah, Dante yeah. was like, come on, come on out. Next time you're in New York, man, like, set it up early. Let's do it right. Yeah, so, give us as much notice as possible. Make sure you could just come and hang. You know, we'll just have you hang with us because uh, I mean, we know who you are at this point. Man, and I'm yeah. telling you right now, Plus we um, got to get we got to steal your likes. We got to squeeze all hey, your fan hey, base. I'm, I'm going to put them out there. baby. You know me. <laughs> That's how show business works now. You're somebody now. So now we got to try to. Snatch Man. <laughs> the cool thing about social media or excuse yeah. me, podcasting, from yeah. what I gather, is people who do podcasts are super cool with like, no, no, get on. Like, it's like a community that's like super sharing of, of their spite, the spotlight. Would you agree? Sure. With that? Yeah, I mean, well, especially the thing about podcasting that's a lot different than stand up is that depending on the podcasting, especially if you need guests, people are a little more accommodating and realize that they have to work with each other a little bit more. Um, it's you still have people who have selfish mentalities the, the bigger they get, you know, but at the same time, you know, people need guests and things. So you got to cooperate and collaborate a little bit more uh, with that. If the smarter people do. I mean, you should just be nice in general. There's no you can have drive. There's you know, a lot of people confuse having drive with being mean and selfish yeah. and just like get out of my way. And that's not necessarily what you have to do. Now, I know that was Michael Jordan's method and he is the greatest basketball player of all time. Second greatest. Uh, You think it's LeBron? Would you say LeBron? <laughs> I, I'm going to get shit on for this, but I, who are you uh, going to go LeBron. with? Yeah, LeBron all day. Well, here's the, the thing. And I'm from I am, Chicago. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. I'm going to get shit wow. on. <laughs> wow. Um, I would say this. I want LeBron to be the great. I hope LeBron, if LeBron wins two more titles, I can officially say that he okay, is. Okay, you're on the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without a doubt. I like LeBron James as a person more. Um, I think that. LeBron plays in a harder era to play basketball in a lot of people will argue that they'll argue that. But someone made I used to argue that and someone made a great point to me once, which was that um, the average athlete that LeBron is playing is probably 100 times better than the average athlete Mm. that Michael Jordan was playing against just based on technology, based on uh, medicine, sports medicine and recovery. So these guys are healthier. Also, just the player's mentality, like Michael Jordan in his own documentary tells you that when he got in the league, uh, you know, people were smoking and drinking at halftime. Right. And doing cocaine. (laughs) Yeah. A lot of cocaine. And they just don't have that as much. Now, I mean, you still got people smoking weed or whatever i don't consider that a performance enhancing drug i think that helps actually right but i think they're also in better conditioning too because those that want to play it's such a competitive thing now people train 12 months out of the year back in the day preseason was just 
to get into shape. That's what preseason was. Right. But now you got to show up in shape for preseason. preseason. So right. I think that's the other thing. But I don't know. Uh, I think anyway, I had I, this. I, I, I'm with you. On, but until he wins, two the more, problem huh? is he's got to win two more. And then I'm all on board. To me, then it's 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 all once right, they have right. this same amount. But I love this, LeBron He's going to get James. this one. He's getting this one. I, I hope so. I root for him every time <laughs> because I, I it makes me so happy when LeBron wins because <laughs> it makes white people tremendously angry. Uh, yeah, why, it makes me so him? happy because he's everything. I mean, conservative white people. That's when I say, you know, white people, yeah. conservative white people, because he's everything <laughs> that's because when LeBron James wins, you can't argue like, oh, look at his behavior. Oh, no, wait, he's a family man. OK, well, look at him. All the drugs he took. Nope, he doesn't take any drugs. Yeah, oh, well, like a model look citizen. At, <laughs> look at how he just spends his money. Oh, wait, he just opened a school for kids. Like, like he does the right things that you would want. Like he is all of it, the best and a role model at the same time. And so it's hard to argue. Now, my girl will tell you that uh, she's a basketball fan and she doesn't like that he flops a lot, apparently, to her. He ain't done that in like seven years. There's still a I thing. Don't know. They still use that argument. She was well, maybe not a flopping, bit. maybe not flopping, but he argues a lot of calls. He does a lot the of NBA chatting. is a bunch of pussies. They all cry like that, though. I guess. But then that goes back to the Jordan argument where people go, nobody was nobody was crying back in the day that, you know, it was a harder league to play in just the like, physical style. Maybe they would argue. That's what they I, say. Yeah. yeah. Like Jordan got beat up a couple of times. But yeah. yeah. But at the same time, now you got like centers that can shoot and stuff. You that's what, what I mean? yeah, that was the like, point I was yeah. about to make. Like a lot of European no Luke Longley's Bill Carrey's, none of that ain't that don't fly no more. Right, right. It's You're seven foot, you gotta of, hit a three pointer. You gotta know how to <laughs> shoot. And they have more European. So the game is um the game is a there's a lot, there's a lot better, and more accurate players. Yeah. So there's a Everyone's lot to shooting be made from half court now. Like it's crazy. That's true. You got a lot of Steph Curry's out there. Um, but anyway, sorry. So I, I we got off our uh, the point, which was to say that there's a lot of ways you can do it. Jordan was <laughs> nice. You don't have to be a around. jerk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to. I have to do this. I have to keep a lot of people wrangled on my podcast. I'm getting better. We'll at go it. off the better rails. It. <laughs> it's fine. I'm. How many is this in? How many episodes are in? This are you? Be 54. 54. Okay, that's a good yeah. chunk. That's a good chunk. You should yeah, start to get. You should start be being able to get your rhythm a little bit by now but you I mean, got no, a good I feel setup pretty good the, the problem yeah. with you you can just i can tell you're polished what are you 600 episodes in like we are at 453 <laughs> i think is will be tomorrow's episode when this comes out when my episodes come out tomorrow it'll be 453 i i only know that because i just edited it uh today or whatever when, so do you guys when you record do you record a specific day or does whenever you can get it in before the next uh, it's usually whenever we can get it in. There's a lot of moving parts. Uh, we always try. This happens every couple of months. We go, listen, from now on, it's every fucking Wednesday. OK, <laughs> none of this confusion. We're going to record every Wednesday at five o'clock. And that's good for like two weeks until Something Dante's happens. like, yeah, I, I got to go out on Wednesday. We got to record Thursday. And <laughs> it all goes to shit. But. We uh, we haven't missed a week. We've been consistent. We've been That's really the gangster we've part. never missed one week. Uh, and I've stayed up many, many nights. I've lost some sleep. Uh, I've uh, I've spent nights taking naps because I'm exporting it, literally sleeping next to my computer and setting the alarm for two hours because I know that I have to wait <laughs> for two hours for it to export before I can upload it. Right. So when it's, it's exported, I wake up, I, then I put it on YouTube and then I set the alarm when it says an hour and a half. I set the alarm for an hour and 25 minutes. Are you doing everything? Um, I do a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, the production work uh, of it. Um, that's kind of my skill set. So it's better that I do that than Dante. But we both do the social media um, and we both kind of book the guests and stuff. But the, a lot of the technical stuff, Dante will do some research and figure out what equipment we need. So he's somewhat tech savvy, but not completely just because right, he's right, busy right. doing other stuff. And so I'll handle that portion of it. But, you know, whatever it is, they haven't all been great uh, quality wise sometimes, but we got them out every week. And I think it's been eight years at this point, seven I can or eight argue years. That never... That's probably the most admirable part of the whole thing is you haven't missed a week. Yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy. Um, you know, and it's and every Tuesday, right? It's every Tuesday. It drops on uh, iTunes and YouTube. YouTube is the big one now. And then we're trying to get more people to the Instagram real man school 202. 
as I'll well. Sure but I've shared it before. I'll share it. You know please. me, man. Of course. Because it, man, it actually, no. and this isn't no. I'm just doing it because you, you know, you're some. I legitimately believe in it. No, yeah, and I can, I can tell, and I appreciate. It. I know you've been with us for a, a long time. You know, at least three years of listening least, religiously. Yeah. Religiously. Yeah, and so you know, I, I appreciate you know you supporting us. But we like being able to help people. It's fun to do a podcast also where you actually help people. I mean, you know, that's nice as well because we get a lot of those emails and people on the street every once in a while. I think I got stopped at a Walmart at like three o'clock in the morning once. That was the kind of <laughs> a little rough because I'm on edge. So when somebody goes, hey, man, and I'm like, oh, motherfucker, I got to fight somebody at a Walmart parking lot at three in the morning. I'm like, like what's no, up? Man. He goes, are you Harry Turchin? I'm like, yeah. and then like my guard goes down a little bit. I'm like, I don't think this is a process server and I don't have any kids. I don't have any kids that I'm aware of. So, yeah, I go, yeah. He goes, oh, yeah. Oh, man, it's cool, man. I love you. And then, you know, you're like, oh, it's nice. And, you know, you're very excited to like, oh, you changed my life. You guys with the, all the you stuff. You get that, that all the time, don't you? A decent amount. I, Dante gets a lot more because he's more recognizable uh, due to the fact that he has, uh, I think he's, bigger than me he also has a, a bone in his ear uh literally <laughs> the rings he got rings uh, he's got multiple rings and usually a, a neon fur coat so you know i'm a little more casual you know when i'm out and about uh, you know right, i'm usually right. wearing a but I'm talking about like even like messages and dms and stuff no like we that. get a lot yeah. of a, a decent amount of messages and dms from people who are uh, mostly men who are just definitely appreciative and, but and women listen too right we do get a lot of women listeners those are those are the most fun to get because in theory um, we get a lot of initial blowback from women because they don't like hearing some of the theories we have because they, don't like it. <laughs> they think that it's they think because our approach is fixing. Ironically, though, our approach is fixing men. Right. right. But right. it also fixes men by making them more. Uh, I, I don't know if strict is the word, but more disciplined and more um, get, more get confident. Back, right? Yeah. One of the phrases, get your balls back. Or be a better um, bitch. <laughs> be a better bitch is one for the women we have. Yeah. Again, right, right, and I've right. talked to Dante about that one. I go, boy, I wish we thought that one through a little bit more when we came up with it, because it's hard <laughs> to put that on a T-shirt and it's hard to uh, defend that when it comes. Because I'll do like these podcasts and things and you explain all this stuff to people who don't know about it or like and especially with women, they just go, you know, that, the, you know, it's they think it's anti-feminist when actually both of us are very much feminist. Right. On the show, we right. support women's rights. We support women's independence. Like we're all about that. Um, when it comes to relationships, we're trying to fix it through the through the man's, you know, perspective, uh, because there's plenty of stuff to help women. Women, women ha have nothing but stuff to help women, even though <laughs> I argue with the sort of the validity of what it does. Like women have hundreds and thousands of support groups officially and unofficially. Women have just like. The he ain't shit club. Every every <laughs> every place has a he ain't shit club. Local chapter, multiple chapters. The county chapter, the state chapter. Literally millions, probably. Family. I right. mean, just the the family. He ain't shit club. Your friends. He ain't shit club. The he ain't shit club for white women. The he ain't shit club for <laughs> black women. Right, 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 right. So women have that on lock. Uh, men don't really have that. Men kind of like try to go. Ah, fuck, man, that sucks. That really sucks. Yeah, That's it, what men have. The, the problem is they don't really know. Sucks. Like no one knows how to help. They don't know either. You're right. They don't know. They Dude, just I feel like I've taken your role. Yeah. And in, in just living an everyday life. I'll be at the bar and just see a guy. Just I'm like and I just I feel I, I can't help myself but to be like, bro, that's wrong. <laughs> you have to do Let it. Let me help man. you this. And I'll and I'll I'll preface by saying and I tell them the story, same story I told you, why I believe I'm so confident in what I'm about to say. And then I tell them about your podcast. I think I, no joke, at least 100 people in the last few years about your podcast out at the bars. Oh, I appreciate that. So man. I'm like, you got just trust me, check this podcast out, listen to it. Don't freestyle. Don't freestyle. There's don't a lot freestyle. of people who There's freestyle of, who don't listen I'm, to the I advice. I a little bit too. I ain't gonna lie. You can't help but freestyle because <laughs> what it is is your instincts as a man or how you've been operating for the last, you know, however long. That's still there. It takes a lot of time to break bad habits. 
So you think like, oh, I'm doing great. Now I can just uh, relax and, you know, and that's when you get you can like never relax. Apart. You, can you can never, never relax. relax. Wait, what did he say? You can't just love them. You can't just love them. No, you can't. <laughs> you do can't I ever get to just love her? No, you yeah, don't. No. It's always a work in progress. Right. It's always something because and again, it's not I don't think it's intentional. I think women subconsciously test you because uh, ultimately they need to know that you are there for them, right? So right. they have to constantly test you to make sure you're the best to protect them in some way. Now, it doesn't mean some protection doesn't necessarily mean financial or physical. It could be whatever it could be, they know, need the protection for, right? Whatever they need it, emotional. Like we always talk about Oprah. Oprah doesn't need financial protection, but she needs something else, whether it's emotional or- The story uh, you tell about the, the dog, port, about so the, the, the puppies? About the pup. Yeah, well, she went, yeah, there was an episode of- uh, Oprah, what I don't know, one of her many shows that she had, but um, she was like looking at she was at a puppy mill or something or some store or something. Look at these cute puppies. And she was like, oh, my God, these puppies. I love them. I want them all. And her boyfriend, Stedman, said no. He goes, no. Nah. <laughs> and she's like, what? He's like, we're not getting two puppies or whatever. And now Oprah, as we point out, is a billionaire. Have you Oprah, ever <laughs> Oprah could just buy an entire neighborhood of houses, kick everybody out and just let the puppies live in these houses in mansions. She could buy like five mansions in a row, kick everyone out and just have them be puppy mansions if she wanted to, (laughs) if she wanted to. But for whatever reason, she trusts in Stedman so much to let him guide her in times where where she realizes she needs it. That doesn't mean Oprah is weak. That doesn't mean Oprah is not uh, a great business person. It's no. just what she needs in that time frame. And that's the tricky part is you as a man, you have to find out what she needs. And I don't think that's as much in reverse. It's just not always there. There's exceptions to every rule. But generally right, right. speaking, that's not we talk in generalities. Very generalities. Um, <laughs> and uh, and people don't like that. And I'm, I'm a left leaning guy. I'm very liberal. But people on the left, the ultra left, don't like generalities because they think it's limiting. Um you know, so it's like men and women are all the same. They are not all the same. This not oh. that doesn't mean that women are weaker or they're worse, but we're not the same. Like I always say not- this comment. I say this and, and and if you listen to it in context, it makes sense. I say men and women are not equal, but we are equally as important. There you I go. Always say that. That's fair. Yeah, that's a like, fair. We're statement. two different things, but we need each other. equally. Yeah. like I need you. You need me. But the argument is, no, that we're all human beings. And it's like, well, if you go into a doctor's office, you know, I hope that, you know, as a woman, your doctor doesn't try to give you a prostate exam right. because we don't have <laughs> the same body parts. We don't have the exact same chemistry. We have different things. And that's OK. That's like you saying know? all lives matter. Oh, you're right. It's <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I feel bad for the first woman who did that. It's funny because she actually meant it legitimately and got torn apart. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. The first one was like some lady on a college campus. And it's just like, you know, it's important that we support our black brothers and sisters because all lives matter. And then she got ripped apart, which uh, is like she's a bystander of what it was. But then is it that got what really happened? Up. That, if I remember it, it was some woman, uh, some president of some college campus uh, when the Black Lives Matter. She was pro Black Lives Matter, <laughs> but because <laughs> she, she wrote just... All Lives Matter, like she was trying to emphasize it like, hey, right, you right. know, they're right. Black Lives Matter because all lives matter. And then that got somehow I don't know how I don't know how the domino effect works. But somehow <laughs> right, then right. it becomes Sean Hannity's thing. And now all lives matter. And then the police are united and all that. But um I feel like mm-hmm. what I've learned when it comes to women is that if I'm if if I'm strong and I can and they trust me like okay I trust this guy they'll let you I think you guys have talked about this let me have the keys to their ship Yeah they'll let you guide them they'll let right. you they want um women want to hand over control they want to trust you to hand over the control though they want to know that you know how to drive is the thing. And, and that's, that's where the tests come from, almost subconsciously. The tests come from. Right. But it's weird because you would think like, hey, I've been driving for four years now. You think you'd stop trying to figure <laughs> out if I know how to drive, but they, they don't. No, they don't. They don't. Every once in a while, they just go try to grab the steering wheel out of your hands and you have to go, what are you doing? Oh, no, no, no my, my bad. And, then you well, know, well, here's a story that I always tell. Here's the example. Yeah. 
when like you know how the, the running joke is women don't know what they want to eat right sure yeah so here's sure. what i always say here's how i try to make it make sense so most guys what do they do hey honey i'm coming home what do you want to eat and she goes well i don't know you pick and then the guy goes oh no, you pick and then they go back and forth at this right yeah and then the guy will say okay finally get a little bit of balls let's do taco bell and she'll say Nah, you know, I had Taco Bell last Thursday. He goes, okay, what about McDonald's? Yeah. Nah, you know, I had McDonald's two weeks ago. And then you're like, well, what the fuck? And you like, I don't know. It's, then this is just back and forth, and you never make a decision. What I do, mm -hmm. I say, because I'm a nice guy, and I really don't care most of the time what I do. Right. I will and most men generally, time. most men generally don't. We will we eat Taco about Bell four days in a row. Right. I literally eat tacos. Until we get tired. You're like, I like, literally eat tacos five times a week. Oh, all right. Like, that's a different discussion, and that's you're, you're counter doing your ice baths. Just, yeah, I'm weird. I'm, <laughs> my girl likes you all of a sudden. She, yeah. yeah, she's like, he's great. Five. So, well, I love tacos. Don't get me wrong, but that's a whole different discussion. Yeah, we'll talk we, about we might want to change that a little bit. <laughs> uh, I, but, I got some theories about it too, but uh, about theories about <laughs> eating. Yeah. Well, as long as I, right. I'm assuming it's not Taco Bell. I'm sure you have no, some no, good no, taco like restaurants yeah, yeah. in no, Chicago. You got, oh, you make your own. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I Hard shell or soft off. shell? Hold on. Oh, you, oh, you got to do soft shell. And it's got to uh, be corn. See, my the girl way. can't stand it. She's from the West Coast. You understand. See, I made the same mistake. I go. I think the problem is people on the East Coast don't know how to make hard shell tacos because I won't eat them because they break apart on me. Oh, they, that's called white tacos. Oh, OK. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I like Mexican taco. tacos. Right, there right. you go. So uh, I'm right, sorry, we got off course again. Uh, no, what, what the hell were we talking oh, about? Oh, so I, then, so what I do is I say because oh, yeah. I don't care. I say, yeah. well, you, I'm about to get something needed. You want something? What are you thinking? And she'll say, oh, I don't know. What are you thinking? And I'll say, how about Taco Bell? And she'll go, no, nah, I don't know about Taco Bell. And I say, well, I'm getting Taco Bell. So <laughs> if if you want something from Taco Bell, I'll get you something. And she there goes, you go. Then she goes. OK, I'll take a gordita. So my point is, here's, yeah. here's what I learned about your podcast. Yeah, I was willing to take the L in that situation if sure. she was upset. Guys are afraid to upset women. Right. Because right. they give you like the little attitude and da, 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 da. What I have learned, especially if you're genuine, you got to be genuine. You can't be don't be a dick to be a dick. But if you're genuine, they realized you did not make a decision. I gave you the decision. You were on. You could not make you one, so on I'm it. Going, I'm going right. to make it now. And I and can't that, tell you how many women have told me I like that you make decisions. There you go. Yeah, that's part of it is that you can you have to. And that's the stress of it at times of being a dude is that even when you don't think you're like even when you don't care, you still have to make a decision for another person and factor in all the stuff with your your partner right so i gotta know all the things my girl likes and doesn't like and i gotta make those decisions like all right i know damn sure she doesn't want to go to olive garden so i'm not gonna bring that up i gotta make sure <laughs> like i gotta know all that stuff but i also gotta know when it's important and when it's not when she doesn't care when she really cares because sometimes she doesn't care but she cares it's a tough balancing act right but it's it in, but making the decision and also you gotta cut out like things that bother you. So for me, I went through that same experience. Uh, I would be like, what do you want to eat? I don't know. I mean, I'm down for anything. Uh, all right. Well, what about this? No, nah, I'm not into that. What about the, I'm like, I, and it would drive me nuts because I hate wasting time. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, it's 20, sometimes it'd be like, and you're watching TV or something. And then a half an hour goes by, you still haven't ordered food. Right. And you're looking through the same seven menus. It's the same seven things. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? And <laughs> right, so right. like, all right, if you don't decide, um, if you're going to give the decision to me, I'm going with it. And that's what it is. But then don't argue with me about it afterwards. Right. And then I either that or I just, you know, I'm like, all right, then I, I won't eat. It's fine. I'll do my own thing. We can eat separate meals if that's how this is going to be, because um, I'm ready to go. I'm ready right. to order my thing. And it just sets a boundary of like, this is not what I'm going to do. And you have to decide whether it's important or not. I don't think that debating over food every night is important, right? So I don't I, I think agree. it's it's necessary. So then you have to take a stand on it, but it's different with each thing, but you still have to make those decisions. I Like I said, and, and to go back to the whole, like the movement and the Me Too movement, and I've mm -hmm. said, so this one, this is my thoughts, but two, I have spoken to many women who have said that sometimes they think that it's gone, the women have said it's gone too far. 
I've heard women yeah. say at times that like, like I, here's a comment I always hear like, where's all the men at? Like, well, there's, there's physically males all around, but they're like, no, they're not men though. I get yeah. that all the time. Yeah, well, it's, uh, well, here the, the thing is, um, and we talk about this on the show as well, that feminism exists for a reason because oh, for men sure. in history were tremendously abusive physically and emotionally and so we still uh, needed legally. it for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we needed it for sure. Uh, and there's aspects where I still think we do need it because there is a mentality sure. of people who don't listen to women in the workplace as much. Sure. They don't take it as seriously. So that does still exist. The problem with any movement is that it gets co-opted by other people at times or everybody wants their say, whether it's valid or, or, or not. And everyone thinks it's as important. And every extreme movement goes goes nuts um the, the thing with left movements is you're trying to be tolerant and respectful of everybody but not everybody is not everybody's necessarily righteous with what they're saying so the thing with men is women wanted men to be a little bit softer and more approachable a little bit kinder which is a valid thing Very valid. um the problem is i think we overcorrected to a degree that's and the point I was making. men became very very soft and over emotional and i believe i was guilty of that early yeah, on same. a lot Me yeah too. so you come from the same aspect of being an, a nice guy like overly nice i was an overly nice guy and i had nothing but fem i was raised by all women no male figures so i was literally i had the femininity like just surrounded yeah, by it, that which could i be, could argue yeah there's Go some good there's some good points of that sure because so yeah. i've been taught i now respect women to an ultimate degree because my grandmother would have it no other fucking way, right? Right. I now know how to listen. Right. right? I She taught me how to clean. Like, I'm super clean. I, I do everything for myself, so I'm independent on that aspect. But then I overcorrected. And right. didn't realize I nice. wasn't getting the results. I was going to nice you to death. I was going to... I was going to prove my... Oh, my... I can, The fact that I'm even saying that is ridiculous. You can say I'm it, a, though, but it helps other people. I'm going to prove that I'm the one for you. And ironically what i do now or coincidentally is i say wait you should and, and it's gonna come off a little misogyny like you should be proving yourself to me like well, why do i want to fuck you just because you there's have nothing return? wrong with that and it's not misogynistic because i think women women don't need that but it, it's ironic because they tend to have that in the marketplace the way it works dating wise they have that they have men proving it but as a person you should always if you're not living, you have to be living your best life mm. and you have to know, hey, this is what I bring to the table. This is what I am. I'm the best uh, me I can be. And I'm real. This is what I bring to the table. And you have to be honest with yourself, though. You got to be. You actually right. have to that's bring the, something the to yeah. the table. You can't just be like, well, sure, I'm out of shape and I don't have a job and uh, I'm not that fun or interesting, but I'm still a catch. You have to go, well, all right. Am I interesting? Am I financially on my own? Am I in the best shape I can be? You know, whatever thing that you feel is important to you, you have to be honest with yourself, right? So man or woman, you know, you have to, you can approach that and say, you should, what do you bring to the table? Because this is what I bring to the table. So it's more of like what the other person brings to the table as long as you bring something to the table, if that makes sense. No, for sure. And that goes back to my point from earlier. My confidence today and I'm still working on it. There's still moments where I have low confidence, but I'm pretty confident human being. Most people would think that I'm like over the top confident, not over the top, but like I'm very confident. And that stems from, dude, I literally take cold showers every day for three years because I'm trying to be the best me. Whether you agree that that's the way to do it or not, that's what I believe. So, and I believe it's helping me be the best me. So I get confidence from doing all these things and taking risks and, and being the best me. And that's where I get my confidence from. So I know I'm dope. To me, right. I think you, you know what I'm saying? So that's where so I, you should want somebody who's dope. I mean, that's just the thing is, you know, whatever your standards are, you should you should want something really great. If not, what's the point? Right. But you have to be great if you want greatness. And, you know, that's cares none. Be dope. That's my whole thing. Baby. That's I, my whole love thing. It. Wait, wait, literally put it on my arm. <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, you got one that yeah, that's pretty good, man. I love that. That's a great one that I don't think you can. You can always defend that one. That's a good tat. That's a good tat right there. You could defend that. Yeah, beef dope. You know I mean? hey, here's the yeah. thing. Here's the thing. 
I'm super, I'm dope. I keep, I literally, you know, and truth be told, I say be dope because I'm trying to teach myself to be dope, right? Anyone who says, so for instance, cares none. I say it because there's times in fact where I care too much. Right, right. And that can so, affect you. You're caring. That's, that goes back to the weak sort of man generational thing that kind of feminism brought out is we care, but we care too much. And it's dangerous to care too much because then you're all about the other person, whether they deserve that or not. And that's where it bites you. Yep, yep. Yeah. And I've been in plenty of uh, relationships where I was giving a lot to that person and just assuming that that would be enough. The fact that I was giving should be like, oh, you should understand I'm a great person because of how giving I am. But sometimes people don't see that and they take advantage, even if they're not intending to, they take right. advantage or they don't appreciate or, or respect it. And you get, you end up being kind of lost in there. And then that's how you end up in a relationship that you're unhappy with arguing over they, stuff they that you leave. should be arguing and then don't leave. Yeah. That's what happened to me. And then look what happens. And I could argue that I'm glad it did happen because then it led my life down a path that now I am today. But I sure, yeah. wanted to leave the situation at one point, didn't leave it. And then I ended up getting hurt. Yeah. And that's what what will happen if you don't, because you again, that's what happens when you don't set your non-negotiables and you negotiate mm. stuff and you constantly do stuff that you don't want to do. Um, and it's OK to do stuff that for other people, it doesn't mean that you're always selfish. But there's times my my girl has asked me, like, you know, I think I want to plant a rose garden or something when we move into a new house or something. I, would that be something you're interested in? And I have to go, honestly, not at all. Um, that is not <laughs> something I want to do at all. I don't. Well, hold on. Wait, wait. Fun. I got to interrupt you. You but, and Andre mm -hmm. got into it a little we bit. We did. Can you turn on the light for me? Maybe? This is getting dark. Anyway. Um, sorry. Uh, it, yeah, you, we. You both made good points. Your point is the school of thought that I would, if I don't want to do something, I'm not going to do it. But his point made sense too. Okay. So here's the. All right. So here's what happened with that. Let me highlight that because that I've been thinking about since he did that. Um, <laughs> we talked about, and this was another example with my girl where she. And this was she said as a joke, but in hindsight, it was a test that she didn't even realize she was testing me at the time. <laughs> she goes, oh, my friend uh, was telling me about this lilac festival. Would you want to go to that? And I was just like, no, I don't, like, go no I don't want to go. Was it a lie? <laughs> I think it was a lavender festival. Excuse oh, me. It was okay. a lavender festival. And uh, and uh, not that it makes a fucking difference. Like, oh, <laughs> I didn't. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize lilacs. I'm all in. Lavenders oh, are for pussies, lilac. but lilacs. I mean, <laughs> right, right. Only the real gangsters go to the Lilac Festival. But so uh, anyway, the, oh, hey, oh this is what Andre is and I. Is that a flower? A lilac is a flower. La okay. Lavender and lilac are flowers okay. that have, uh, you know, that women uh, will put in fragrances and things. Oh, okay. uh, not yeah. women, but people in general. But really, it's I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like the smell of it. Oh, you, you, in, you actively you do, do not like lilacs. Um, no, I don't. Here's the weird thing. I don't like the smell of flowers. So when people say stop and smell the roses, I hate the smell of really? roses. Yeah, yeah. I just don't. Whatever the chemical thing is, it just yeah, hits my nose in a way yeah. I don't like. You like cilantro? You eat cilantro? Uh, I will eat cilantro. I like cilantro. Yeah, cilantro is delicious. I like that. Some but... people are like, fuck cilantro. <laughs> I could, but I understand that because I hate parsley. Right, right, right. Put parsley and some shit. I'm all, I'm, uh, I'm, see, I'm, I'm a with fat it. fuck. I, I, as long as it ain't olives, I fuck with it. I'm with you on the olives. I don't know <laughs> who, do I don't understand do why it. people do it. I don't understand what they're doing in the Middle East with the whole olives. But <laughs> I, my dad's they Armenian, so I grew up with all of that, all of that crap. You I know, like olive oil. Love. Yeah, that's fine. By the time it gets that point, they squeeze all the disgusting <laughs> right, olive the, juice out of it. Right, they just right. got the oil. But anyway, so Andre was um, I was telling Andre this story like, you know, my girl was telling me about it and I just go, I'm not interested in, in that and in going to that. But um, it's not something I want to do. But my point in saying that was, you know, there are plenty of guys who go, all right, I guess that's where we're going. And then you spend a miserable day where you're not happy doing something. Andre's argument was that you should say yes to almost everything Now he says yes to almost everything now, which is a little bit suspicious because the problem with Andre is he, he and I come from two different worlds. I came from the world that you came from, which is the overly nice club, the, you know, I'll do anything for anybody club uh, where I said yes to everything growing up. Andre, on the other hand, said it was the uh, fuck 
fuck the world club. <laughs> and and uh, just it was all about himself. And he would just like, you know, he would if, if a girl sneezed wrong, he'd break up with her because <laughs> he was very cold and he had to learn how to be very loving. Right, 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 so he's right, right. now just discovering the validity of being open to the world. Right. OK. And he's also 10 years younger than me. So he might have a different right, right, perspective right. on it 10 years from now. You know, he's a young kid. So he's like, yeah, man, he's all. And also he started smoking copious amounts of weed in the last year and a half. So um, the combination of all that has really made him into a hippy dippy where he's like, yeah. say yes to everything. But there's the some people, validity in that, though. There is a validity in, in being open to things for yeah, sure. To being open to being open. Right, right. Um, but not yes to everything. Open to some things. Yeah. Not, but not everything. yes to everything. Right. Yeah. Um, so for me, I was open to a lot of things in my life but you know that doesn't mean i say no to everything now granted i'm a I, i'm a homebody i like staying home but there's plenty of times i went all right let's do this let's try this that my girl will recommend something well, let's try this and if i don't i better have something better planned or better to do um and if i don't then i have to say yes and go along with it but i better find other things for us to do together i better make that time we spend together worth it that we don't have to go off and do some goofy activity because we got mm. nothing else going on. Cause right. really women want to go out more often than we do. They just, they, they like, just, yeah, they, they, they like being dated. They like it. Yeah. <laughs> Guys would just be like, oh, yeah, I'll if, just cuddle up. Listen, if we could get away with it, every first date would be in our apartment. Not even, I don't even mean Wait, from facts. the fucking part. <laughs> no, I don't no. even mean the fucking part. No. I mean, if we could I'll get cook. away with it, we'd be like, look, you come over, I'll cook. I can't cook. I'll order from a good place, but I'll put it on the plates to make it look nice. Just come over there. Let's get us to know this way. We don't have to go to a restaurant that I don't now, know. This would be a about. good spot if I ain't got sponsorship yet, but I'm like, like Blue Apron. But Blue <laughs> Apron would be great. Blue Apron Dude, would be it's great. it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Smart. Get get the Blue Apron. And if you can, the Blue Chew, which I love the Blue oh, Chew. Okay. Get it like a it's blue on chew. most podcasts. I haven't uh, taken the Blue Chew. I, I, I want to. Is it? Have you tried it? I have not tried blue chew. I mean, I've taken uh, Viagra or whatever when I, Does, I, mean, I don't have Does issues. Oh, yeah, I mean, it definitely I mean, it definitely. Um, let's see. What are you? What, what, what do we say? Barry Bonds did. Uh, it definitely gives you an assisted like play, you know, like. Uh, so like if so it's like like so, for instance, right now, I'm good in that department. Will it yeah, just, so am I. Yeah. So like if you're. But, it, like if you hit home runs now, I'm hitting fucking vicious home runs. Yeah, instead of a instead of I'm a double, it's Viagra. a home run. Right. I'm to give now, me some Viagra. The thing is, <laughs> I don't know enough. I didn't do the research, so I have I haven't done it often, so I don't know how it might affect your heart. I do believe so. If you're not if you're not experiencing problems, you may not need to take them, but it definitely uh, helps right. a little bit. It, you know, it's a, some assisted plane. If you really want to knock it out of the park, you want to cork the bat, and if you just want to show off i tried I the gas station it. pills and i can't tell if it's placebo but i remember thinking you know i'm putting a little bit more work in it right now but i but well, I, but I, I mean the gas station pills probably have some chemicals in it i don't know it probably has some stack or two or whatever i mean those chemicals yeah. but here's I couldn't the thing tell I, if it worked i'll tell you this i've changed my diet and gotten better and this is what i talk about the tacos um i've been doing the keto diet and uh you loving you it know, you loving it uh, I mean, it's difficult at times. I like it a lot. My girl knows how to cook, so that helps. Um, but losing weight, I know that my performance and I have like, uh, and I say this because it helps, it helps men just understand it. Like that is definitely affected my performance in a positive way. Like oh, uh, sure. I didn't, I didn't have problems necessarily before, but I didn't realize how much better off I would be mm. as far as maintaining and stamina and, uh, just you know being able to keep going after you finish so i used to thing, weigh yeah. 417 okay pounds. yeah so you do know i forgot I lost about that 175 pounds you know wow and okay and my, my when i first lost that weight it felt like my dick got like huge yeah it it does get it but i think i realized bigger. what it is like your body just goes small but your dick was always there yeah, no, that's all it is. Your dick didn't get bigger. It's just there's less oh. fat surrounding it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. That's what, I'll, yeah. I remember thinking, dang, but, I got some listen, good dick down there. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, that's happened to me too. Where, <laughs> right, but right. however you do it, you do it. I don't yeah, care right, if it's right. if it's it's growing or if the fat around it is going away. All I know is that I've added two inches. So you know, yeah, like a, I'm like a win. Whoa. A win is a win. 
And so, you can last longer naturally. You can last longer. And also just from a like physically performing, you know, I can be on top of her for longer without right, right. getting without, having to get, without cheating it and going like, oh, she comes <laughs> soon because this is uh, there's a lot of work. There's so many women who have no idea how much in my head I was like, come on already, come on already, come on already. Because oh, I only got see, like another 30 seconds in these arms. Oh, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I just yeah. saw I posted something today. The girls that don't know how to ride on their feet. Mm. You gotta, you, so for the for the for the females listening, you got to step your riding game up. You can't do okay. the knees anymore. No We've advanced. The women have advanced to your feet now. I didn't know this was an issue. I've had it both ways, many many times. You know, uh, I mean, I've, I'm a fan of trying a lot of different stuff because everybody. Well, 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 well we, can we chime in on uh, you? You like some interesting things. Oh yeah, you mean the B the BDS? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got. Uh, yeah, I mean, see. yeah, I mean, I've <laughs> I've delved into that a lot, but that was before I lost the weight. That wasn't a. Oh, um, so you you're not too hardcore just, you know, in that? No, I'm still. Yeah, I still enjoy it. You for still sure. got your bag. I'm saying you that wasn't because bag. I lost the weight. I do have the duffel bag. I don't use it as often. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be crossed okay. out because now that I'm I'm with my girl, I've run out of stuff. The thing is, this is interesting, Chris. Uh, when you when you narrow it down to one woman, she doesn't really want you to use any of the stuff you used to use on the other girls. <laughs> it's a, it's a Shockingly, <laughs> it makes it a very I guess. shocking I guess. thing that she's They're like. They're so selfish, man. <laughs> you know, they don't understand how expensive all that shit is. I, it's just crazy. You know, that's the problem. Shit. You, do you have do you own the uh, like the uh, what do you call the the the, the wedge? Hitachi magic one? Oh, no, I've heard about the wedge. Which one's the wedge? Oh, the yeah, it's like a sex. The this wedge. I don't have. A, I know what it is. The the wedge. I'm familiar with it. I just don't own one. Um, I, I, uh, I kind of want to get handy one of those. It. It's supposed to be vicious. A wedge is like uh, it's I mean, it looks like I mean, it's like a foam thing that's literally yeah. like a, a, a giant pie. Wedge oh, it's, it's called the liberator you because you can. Oh, the liberator. OK, that's it's what the same it's called. Thing. The liberator. It's the same, yeah. But it's the same concept, right? You yep, can. It's just like thing. a, a wedge like that a woman it forces can, her body. Firmer, yeah, right. On an angle. So you, could you can do get it in different there. ways. You could layer <laughs> over. Yeah. It's like a little. You know what it is? It's like an evil Knievel ramp, but with padding. <laughs> yeah, right, it's like yeah, a ski exactly. slope, right, right. but with padding, so you could do your damage. So you could bend her over frontwards, or yeah. you could layer. Yeah, you know, I'm side. black. I'm going uses. straight from creative. the back. Straight from the back. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. You open with that. Oh, great. You yeah, know, I got this thing called the finishing move. I'm man. familiar I'm, with it. Yeah, I got this. I think the thing yeah, but you got to the... warm up, set up for the finishing no, move. No, I, I set up. For, yeah, yeah. You go right into it. No, no, no. The finishing move comes come out. You tell me you come out and open with 1999. What are you nah, doing? Nah, 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 you got to nah. you got to hit him with raspberry beret, a little purple rain, and then you go into 1999. Yeah, but I nah, guess yeah. we all have our different styles. Yeah, no, I think. Uh, um, no, I don't have I don't. Yeah, I've never used one, but I, it's, it seems like a great thing. I just don't know. Uh, they're like I just haven't. Had, I don't know. I haven't. Oh, are they? Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> that's too rich for my blood. That's probably why I don't have one. They got some used ones for like 100. <laughs> Yeah, that's a little rough. That's a little rough to explain. Hey, baby, I got two. Where'd you get that? Craigslist. Don't worry yeah, about yeah. it. Facebook. We're just going to put a pillow. <laughs> We're just going to put two pillowcases on it. It should be fine. Right. All right. Well, check um, this out, man. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I have nothing. I was just going to. Uh, nothing. It's all good, man. Uh, I don't want to keep you too long, man. I want to say no, no, from the bottom of my heart, I truly appreciate you and Dante and Andre. You guys have literally helped me become what I'm going to be because my dreams now are like, whoo, like, oh, shit. Wow. Like I'm I'm and I'm now in a trajectory where things are happening. And well, I and think I they owe, are going like, to happen for you, man. Yeah, I, owe I think a lot they of that are because I've man. seen. Well, listen, man, I, that makes me feel really good. Um, it makes me like extraordinarily happy to know that we've changed anybody's life for the better. You know, because I know where I felt when I was before Dante changed my life. And uh, and it seems silly saying it. But if you know, if I can change and have an impact on somebody's life, that's really amazing. So I appreciate it. And I am so proud of what you're doing, because I know you I mean, I've been watching you on Instagram for a while 
And uh, I mean, I can even just tell by the amount of effort you put in the background there that is this. You, you yeah, you see that about what you're doing. It's a great that's background. It's a green screen, but it looks good. Making no. me jealous. Oh, it is a green screen. All right, <laughs> I was confused, but you made it. Oh, that's smart. Oh, let's oh, see. No, oh, there we go. It no, it's good though. It looks. It, oh wow, it looked good. I was going back and forth on whether it was a green screen or just the lighting, but the fact that you made, you know, you're doing that, you're doing this podcast. I think it's incredible. I think, you know, your hard work is going to pay off and I'm glad that I could be part of that in, in some way. And man, when you're out in, in New York, uh, when all this stuff calms down, let us know in advance and, you know, yeah, we'll, I definitely we'll, will, 100%. we'll put the whole weekend out for you, man. You know, Hey, shout out your socials, man. Let people know what's going on. Uh, all my social media is at Harry Turjanian. Um, uh, you can check out man school 202. Uh, on our YouTube page, uh, that's where the episodes are. You please like and subscribe, or you can go to Real Man School Two Hundred Two on Instagram. Um, and also, you can check out if you're a wrestling fan. Check out Catalyst Wrestling. That's the company I'm a part owner in. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything, man. And then my stand-up dates. I'll have some more dates when we get back to being allowed to perform in front of live audiences again. And anyone y'all know, y'all can find me on all platforms at Chris Cares None. Uh, tell Dante he. I'm gonna come at him next. I'm we'll coming get at you, him. Dante. We'll get yeah. you, Dante. Don't even worry about it. Because that Dante one is gonna. It. That's gonna mean something. First of all, you mean something, Andre, but that one's gonna be something else too, man. Well, I think coming. you did it in the right order, if I can say frankly. I think I, you yeah. start out with Andre, um, <laughs> and you know, get that out of the way. Yeah, I like that you go one out up the front. to. Then you go up to me, and then you get the the main event. You know, you'll you'll we'll get you, Dante. Don't even worry about it. I had a great time with Andre, though. That was a great podcast. Andre's very funny. Andre's a great dude. Hopefully, he wasn't too high. The problem is with Andre now is he's got he's getting too <laughs> comfortable on the show, and he's just now he's just taking it. He he calls it the volcano, but it looks like a garbage bag full of marijuana. <laughs> yeah. is what hey, it looks those like. Things, with, if you smoke weed, those things are good. Like they're vicious. Well, I have no doubt because he's fucking wrecked on the show the last couple of weeks. But uh, and you you still don't drink, right? Uh, yeah, I don't, I never enjoyed it. So I don't, I yeah, stopped drinking, uh, eight months ago. Oh, good for you, man. Best That's... decision I've ever made ever. Yeah. Yeah. You All know time. what it's, well, the thing about alcohol and I'm not like an anti-alcohol guy, if you enjoy it, enjoy it, but just understand you are putting the whole concept of getting drunk is that you're poisoning your body, but just a little bit. Like, that's why you right, feel man. all loopy is because you put poison <laughs> in your body. Right, 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 right. All that is, all alcohol is, is like rotted. Like, yeah, it's just rotted sugar. Like wine is just sugar that's fermenting. It's rotting and it just gets you fucked up. Um, but just enough so that you don't die just a little bit. Well, and, you know, so know that's going to have consequences. And I know we're coming to an end, but just really quick. The reason what helped me get over the alcohol was the, or the reason I was drinking was because I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. Oh, wow. And that's what the booze does, right? It gives you, lowers your inhibitions. You get a little bit more. It makes you feel better, yeah. That's what, you know. And it's a fake, like, Band-Aid, though. Yeah. I I saw a podcast with Theo Vaughn and Jordan Peterson about alcoholism. And I guess Theo Vaughn was super turned up, drugs, alcohol, cocaine. And and, and he said, I stopped. Once he was 90 days in, it was, his words, unprecedented how good he felt. So I like, wow. I have to give it a shot. Are you kidding me? All and right. It's true. It's true, so man. Feel Fuck great. alcohol, man. I, I can't right. stand in person. I'm not saying, hey, if you can handle it, you do you. But I was, I was getting fucking wrecked. Oh, shit. Well, I'm glad you feel better, As soon as I stopped man. that, then everything started trajectory. And imagine how much better you're going to feel when you stop eating five nights worth of tacos. That's We're going to talk step. about that next time. We're going <laughs> to talk about this step. next time. If you All think right. the alcohol is wreaking havoc, imagine what. Well, uh, hold on, before I, hold on, you, hold on. Here's the all I all it is: meat, okay. cilantro, onions, salsa, and two tortillas. Ah, uh, the tortillas is what doing you. But it's only two of them. That's a hundred yeah, calories. That's how. No, no, I'm not talking about the calories. Anyway, this is a whole other discussion. Yeah, we'll get to that next time. We'll get to that next time. <laughs> Don't forget, I've lost 175 pounds. I'm, so I'm super proud of you. I'm super. Calories. How much do you weigh now then? The like three. 265, 270? 265. All right, that's where I'm at right now. But do you you do realize, like, as, as far as humanity is concerned, we're still both tremendously overweight. Like, oh, yeah, even absolutely. though we both feel the best we've ever felt in oh, our yeah, lives. For sure, for sure. I'm this would be dude. somebody's, like, wake-up call weight. Like, somebody else <laughs> somebody else goes in the doctor's office, they weigh 270, the doctor's like... Fuck, you really need to get your life in order. Or you're gonna die soon. <laughs> I mean, I listen. I That's get that. That's the funny part. Like, hey, I'll, I'll, you know what though? I've heard there's a lot of skinny, skinny, skinny dudes that have yeah. told me I would rather be me. 
Oh, really? Okay, fair like, enough. Like, if you're so skinny where you, like, scared, like, I get to walk around life kind of like, who the fuck's going to fuck with me? You know what I'm saying? That's true. That's like, true. Like, you're going to have to really fuck me up. <laughs> That's that true. true. Imagine all the 400. I really felt like you couldn't fuck me up. But now I'm like, okay, I'm well, going to fight this guy. I think, ironically, you reach for me, it was the opposite. You reach a certain weight where, like, at first you feel big and strong. And then when, when I got up to, like, 345, I was like, you know, I'm having a tough time tying my shoelaces. I don't know whose asses yeah. I'm going to kick. Yeah, I just got wind apnea, all yeah. kind of shit. Yeah. When What's you up look at your next time, man? Yeah. When you look at your shoes and go, do I have to tie that? I mean, or can I get around without? Can I just get around without sometimes tripping? You, sometimes you just slip the shoes. The, the shoes yeah. Things. yeah I'm You're like, I, <laughs> I'm not going to be moving that fast. Let's be honest. At 3:45. Right. right. Anyway, thank you for having me, Chris. Well, man, thank I appreciate you, brother. it, brother. I'm gonna talk to you soon, man. And like I said, tell Dante he's next. I'm gonna. All right, I'll get him for you. I promise. We'll get him. All right, brother. I have a good one. All right, you too.